Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy, happy campers. campers! Yes! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. I'm so excited. It is week 88 here at camp. And um, if I sound a little <laughs> a little off, I am feeling a little off. Uh, I'll be okay. But if I fall to the wayside, it is, you know, I'm just, I'm a little out of it, a little under the weather. It's okay. There's two in this relationship and there's two at this camp who are counselors. And I will pick it up. Where you put it down. I can always count on you. Yeah, well, we help each other out. We really do. So I just did the ad reads because I was like, maybe let's not submit the, I know. the gravel. <laughs> I know. But our beautiful audience here at Camp Shady Bridge doesn't care if you have a little gravel. Honestly, it's kind of hot. This this is a hot, sick voice. Do you want the compliment or do you want me to say something sassy? I'll take the compliment. Okay. Well, Thank you. Well, come back, everybody. I hope you're snuggled up in your cabins, your cars, your cabooses, your sleeping bags. And I hope you're ready for another fantastic show. Um, when I was going through my notes before we started recording, I'm like, I'm gagged. I'm gagged at every section. I love every single thing I'm going to say today. And I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to be here, too. We just got back. From Mexico. We did. If you're on Patreon, you already saw the vlog, but this is going to be our podcast episode um, supplementing those incredible stories. And um, we had quite the trip camper. So about two months ago, Jonathan and I were asked by Jose Cuervo, everybody's favorite tequila brand, to partake in a pilgrimage to the homeland, which was um, Tequila Mexico. Did you campers know that all tequila in the world is made in Tequila, Mexico. Isn't there something along the lines with, with like champagne? Like if it's going to be called champagne, it has to be out of champagne. Where is that? Yeah, Champagne, France. Uh, of course. It's the re I think champagne is more of a region where tequila is kind of like a zip code. Right. Yeah, move over Beverly Hills, 90210. It's all about <laughs> tequila zip code now. I'm not sure what that is. It's really cr incredible, though, when you get there, campers. It's like rolling fields of agave. It's literally what you would think of in a desert, like in a Bugs Bunny cartoon, to me, is what this looks like with agave instead of cacti. I never watched Bugs Bunny. Really? Yeah. Looney Tunes? Yeah. No, it wasn't for me. No, too old. Um, yeah, too spooky. Too spooky. I loved Yosemite Sam, that crazy nut. You kept saying that the entire trip, though. You were like, it looks like a cartoon. I did not say that. I don't uh, think I said that once. I don't know. I think I have a memory of oh, that. God. Well, let's start at the very beginning, because we're not going to give you a play-by-play -play of the entire trip. Like, we, we never do that. That's so boring. But we're just going to highlight the best moments of the trip, because this was um, chaotic, as always. One thing about us, we're going to travel, and we're going to make a memory. We can't help it. We're going to like laugh until we start crying on an airplane because being laughing when it's when you're supposed to be quiet is my favorite thing in the entire world. You just can't stop. It just keeps going. Oh my God, it was rolling. So where, where should we begin? Let, let's begin before we even begin. Okay. So we have had these air tags, these Apple air tags, hashtag not sponsored, in our junk drawer downstairs, and we just haven't been using them. But every time I'm standing in the kitchen too close to the island, my phone starts binging. And it's like, do you want to connect this? And I'm like, what? It, like, where even is it? It's because when I purchased the air tags off of Amazon, when I got, I opened one and I pulled the seal off of it and then I got nervous because like, what am I going to do with this thing? And then I just didn't finish it. So yeah, it's been trying to activate in our, in our like junk drawer for seven months. She's probably so happy to finally have a home. Oh, she's been adopted. She's like, thank God. It's literally anytime I was walking by the island in the kitchen, my phone would just stop. Well, it felt foolish to not use them because like the number one use of an air tag, that's just, don't, don't quote me on that. I believe it's for luggage because essentially the technology behind it it's like this little chip that you put in your suitcase and then you can go on your iphone your find my iphone app or whatever and you can see it move and i always everyone uses them for luggage and i was like this is the perfect time we're going international let's activate these little poker chips yeah you're very smart for that and good thing that we did good thing that we did so we had a layover for in um mexico city right in mexico city so we get there and obviously there's a language barrier and we weren't sure if we were supposed to take the bags from the, the luggage carousel and put them, like bring them with us. It's a connecting flight. So we assumed not. But then uh, somebody recognized you said hi 
and was like, I doubt that they do that. You're probably going to have to get your own bag. And that kind of threw me off, well, both of us. So then we started trying to ask people, do we need to grab our bags from the carousel? Like, should we wait or do we just go to the plane? I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. I'm pretty sure she's a camper. Oh, she I mentioned she mentioned the word she said podcast. So she's like, Oh, I live in Mexico City. So that's that was really cool. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. So like when we got there, the entire Mexico City airport is it's not like cushy, right? It's it's kind of um uh what's the word I'm looking for? industrial there, yeah it's like and, and it hey we're we're literally americans and we i know that they don't speak english there obviously we're in mexico but it was the first time i've ever been in a different country where i i should have learned i should have learned more spanish and that's Duolingo. truly on me because i was in full panic not being able to communicate and um there's no one to blame but myself because you can't expect people to speak your language in their, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, hundred percent us. hundred percent. And it was like a hard question to ask because then it started getting mixed up. Everyone, it was like a 50, 50 split of everyone who worked at the airport that we asked if it was a yes or a no. Yeah. We kept getting a yes and then a no and then a yes and then a no. So I was like, this is actually making me feel worse. Is the bag going to be transferred or not? We decide that the bag is probably just going to make its way there. It's not going to be on the carousel. We're just going to get on the plane and our bag is going to, you know, do its thing. Well, first off, we go through the TSA there and I don't know what I was thinking, but I was trying. <laughs> oh my God. Jonathan looks at me. I go, do you have to take out your iPad? He goes, no, you're totally fine. I'll take it out. He goes to put his eye. They literally like almost brought you to a back room to search you because you didn't take your iPad out. No, I didn't take my iPad out. I didn't out. either, but I was fine. I know. And that's why I'm like, well, what the hell? So then we, I had to do mine again. And he goes, he goes, can you open your bag? So it's like, oh my God. So I opened my bag. What did I forget in there? A giant one liter bottle of water. My bad. Yeah. So that was a double whammy. Yeah. He was like, this is definitely over four fluid ounces. I was like, well, if you like split it up, it doesn't. But was, like, I get it. He definitely was a friend of Judy. Yeah. He was a gay man. He was uh, nice. And he like, you guys locked eyes and he was like, no, I literally, you are a sister under the LGBT rainbow flag and Mm -hmm. he put you through. He did. But if that was an angry man, Mm -hmm. I would have been in Tlaquila, Mexico and you would have been fighting a case. Yeah. Locked up abroad. That was almost you. I know. It's scary. It's scary. And that was on me. A hundred percent. I'm a stupid American. Call call it what you want. Um, So then we get on the plane, right? And I'm fr- well, both of us are frantically checking to see the the find my to see where the air tags are, and it does appear as though they're still in the carousel. Yeah, and mine wasn't updating. Yours kept updating, but I was convinced that they had not moved. They were like three terminals away, and I was like, "That's it." We're going to land in Guadalajara with no luggage. It's what it is. And we started like healing from that. We were like, okay, what are we going to do now? We can't get off the plane. It's just it is what it is. So that's when I think we just get into like a manic, silly mood. And this is also the second flight. Yeah. And I had been up since 4 a.m. It's probably like now 12 hours later and we're on our final leg of the trip. So this man in front of us, I'm obviously, I'm peeking around. I'm going to go shopping a little bit and see what everybody's watching. I'm interested. Um, so this guy in front of us is watching Pirates of the Caribbean and I'm like, oh my God, I love this movie. I haven't seen it in so long. And in my head, I, I know what part is coming up. It's the part where, uh, one of the captain guys with the wigs is walking in slow-mo and everything's like exploding behind him. I just remember it so vividly. It was so cool. I don't know how you brought your attention to it. No, I'll tell you what happened. You're, we're watching it collectively kind of together over this man's shoulder. And then you were like, I love this part. And then you looked at me and I was like, oh, I don't remember. And you're like, you don't remember this part. It's the best part of the entire franchise. And I'm like, no, I don't. And it keeps going on and on and on. And all of a sudden, I see Joaquin Phoenix on the screen dressed as Napoleon because it's not Pirates of the Caribbean. It was Napoleon. But the way that you looked at me with such conviction (laughs) as if I didn't remember this part of the movie when it wasn't even the movie. No, I definitely did. I I did. I did. I was like so certain. I was like, wait, you don't remember the iconic scene? Like dumb, dumb. Like what is wrong with you? And then I see like cannonballs taking people out and I see a lot of blood and I'm like, okay, Disney plus. Like I don't remember this, but go off. (laughs) Yeah. Honestly, they, they had a similar coloration of the film and timeline. I heard that movie sucked. I did not see it, so I cannot weigh in. And apparently, I am a distant relative of Napoleon, and I, I don't think I'm proud of that. I, I, where did you get this information from? My father. You also told me that your father told you related to John F. Kennedy, and when I brought it up to him, he was like, is Jonathan spreading porky pies again? We have the same family crest. That doesn't mean you're related. That's just... Okay, first of all, you... Oh, you just share, you share a family you, crest with you, people who... Uh, family... What's a crest? I don't know, but family... Listen... Not every Kennedy is related. 
Okay, if you, I grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts. You think every Sousa in that town was related? No, they weren't. There's about a billion of them. Not every Kennedy is related. And just because you Googled Kennedy Family Crest and cross referenced something that probably wasn't fact checked doesn't mean you're like JFK. But no, let's live in your reality for a minute. No, I'm sorry. Do you know where JFK is from? Wait, so Jonathan, you're related to J, yeah, Boston, where I'm from. And I'm not claiming it. I didn't know. So um, you're related (laughs) to JFK. Yeah. You're also related to Napoleon. What? What are the chances Twice there? removed. What are the chances there? I'm just... I i don't believe it. And I think you need to come down to reality for a minute because your dad literally clocked you last Thanksgiving when I brought that up. He was like, that's absolutely incorrect. And then you're like... Wait, 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 wait. I said, no, not like not JFK, JFK, but like a different JFK. Like there has to be a John oh, F. Kennedy somewhere in the family lineage. Campers, lo- clock it and listen to that because this is what he's talking about here. Okay, so it always there's always a backtrack. So. I'm a tale teller. Yeah, you are. But anyways, back to the back to the the trip. So after we said this, we we were giggling about how ridiculous it was. I was like driving at home so hard that I was like, you haven't seen this. And then that's when the laugh attack happened because you we just couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, that happened on the other flight too. That I've said this before on the podcast. My favorite feeling in the world is when you can't stop laughing and there's tears rolling down your face and it like honestly hurts a little bit like i live for that moment and when the screen turned to joaquin phoenix just as napoleon <laughs> i looked at you and i said really oh i thought it was a home video i said uncle <laughs> 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 uncle, 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 uncle. I okay, miss you. so we land in Guadalajara and it is 900 degrees in there. And guess what was there? Our bags. Yes, yeah, so we literally had nothing to worry about. Also, but the worry was bigger than I'm making it seem because I was screen recording it as we talked about in the last episode. Yeah, the podcast. I was screen recording it because I thought we were going to have to do like an insurance claim or something. I don't know. I was taking it very seriously. You're just using buzzwords. That's the zeitgeist of it all. Let's be honest there. Well, it was crazy too. And now that we've gotten this out, we can say two of our friends. Eric, three. Well, well, we didn't, at first we only knew about Erica and Scott. Erica and Scott flew in Newark and they all got grounded in Dallas. And Dallas had like crazy lightning storms. So they were on the tarmac for hours. They got kicked off their flight, getting pushed back. They were literally in limbo for nine hours. They eventually get a flight out of Dallas to Guadalajara, but their bags don't make it on the plane. Same thing happened to Rod. Dallas was like the horcrux of the entire trip. Everyone that flew into Dallas lost their baggage. So all three of them had no bags the entire vacation. They only had their carry-ons, plus a lot of the people behind the scenes that all went through Dallas. So when we heard this information after we got to Guadalajara, we couldn't even tell our story because we made the whole thing up and nothing actually bad happened. But in the moment, it was severely stressful because of the language barrier and because of the misinformation and the mix and the multiple answers and the fact that the air tags weren't loading. But it's really hard. And it's like you need to be able to hold space for people who also are going through it. Because they're literally going through what we feared because we, we felt yeah. the relief of it. And they're like, no, baby, I have to get up early tomorrow to buy new clothes that I had already picked out strategically to look great for for photos and videos for this trip. And I have to yeah. purchase that. I've never lost a bag knock on wood, um, but it is, it's, uh, it's awful. And they typically, what they do is they send it back to your home address. So when I, this was early, maybe it was probably like pre 2000. This might've been like 99. Uh, my cousins were visiting me and they had lost one of their bags. And it was the first and only time we like really, really lost a bag. And they were coming from Pennsylvania to Illinois. And I remember I was of no help because I kept seeing the same blue bag go around the carousel. I was like, mom, that's that blue bag again. I think it's lost. And she's like, shut up, shut up, you little shit. She didn't say that, but that's what, what I'm was reading. was a high tense situation and you're making, yeah. you're making jokes. Yeah, my Aunt Joy is like, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, with Aunt Joy's yeah. bag? Oh, uh-huh. no. So I don't know. My my dad and my uncle took care of it. But what I remember happening was they literally like dropped it off at the bottom of our driveway at our house. They do that. They literally, That's what they do. That's what they do. They threw it out the window like a goddamn paper Newspaper. in a, a freaking movie. Oh my god, that's a that's a fun job. Whose job is that? My uncle. It's probably not a fun job because you you honestly they probably don't even knock at the door because they don't want the interaction. Like I don't want that confrontation. But I think it's now, not his fault. And now not everybody's getting newspapers, so it's just like certain people are because um, per- media is no, not I'm, dead. I'm but... talking about delivering the oh the luggage. Yeah, oh, sorry. Because I'm saying like he's not going to knock <laughs> on the door, being like, "Have your bag," because right. at that point it's not a gift; it's more of a resolution, and you're not getting a pat on the back 
for messing up it in the first place. You know what right. I mean? So I would drop them off and let them find it. Right. Maybe ring the doorbell and run. But, but at the bottom of our driveway. Uh, anyway, how long we, was the driveway? It was. It could fit three cars. That's fresh. She should have brought up the door. Yeah. He, he said, I'm busy. We have a lot of lost luggage. And he probably did. Well, it was O'Hara Airport. It was O'Hara Airport, which I got lost in the first time I ever flew by myself. Come on, Home Alone. Literally, it was scary. I was like, what is a terminal? I have no idea. You are directionally challenged, and I'm sure that you would have messed it's it like, up. Goddamn candy land. Okay, back to our story. <laughs> Where were we? Yeah, so we got there. Our luggage was fine. We had a great first night. We're not going to give you the details about like, blah, blah, blah. who cares? Um, Let's talk about the highlights of the trip. Okay. Okay. The Jose Cuervo Express. Which is a real thing. And when they said that, I thought it was... I, I didn't know what I thought it was. I thought it was PR or press. Right. I thought it was like a thing they added to the trip. But it was it's a real functioning train. Do you want right. to explain it? Um, well, we were in Guadalajara. And tequila is like how long away? I think it's like a two-hour drive. Two-hour drive. Right. So they have a train that specifically goes from Guadalajara to tequila. It's owned by Jose Cuervo. It's called the... Cuervo Express, the Jose Cuervo Express, and it's literally like branded on the outside, like a legit train. I don't know if it's classified as a locomotive, but I'm going to classify it as the. As it's such. traditional locomotive. I can tell. I yeah. can. I look at her and I say, "That's loco, and that's motive." Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god, loco motive is crazy motion. <gasps> oh my. Are you, you don't fucking know. kidding me? You don't know. Yes, I do. Do willing to? If motive is motion, that part you didn't. You well, that part I just kind of like, it and was off the cuff. It's loca, not loco. Oh, but where you been, loca? I think that's a gender thing. So she's a female train. Locomotive, yeah. girl, queen, boss. Love it. So this, this train takes you from point A to point B directly. And it only leaves the station like two times a month, maybe once. <laughs> Most trains take you. All trains take you from point A to point B. They don't off-road. Right. But I already said Guadalajara and yeah, Tequila. I didn't want to repeat myself, but I'm I had sorry. to. Guys, are you keeping up? Please. So while we're in this train... It was like, and I, this is the only way I can describe it, and the only way I could describe it to others, was like that Halloween episode, season three, episode 13 of Pretty Little Liars, something about the crazy train. And they have, it's like the weirdest like murder mystery on a train, right? And Adam, uh, not Adam Levine, not Adam Devine, Adam Lambert is there. I got there. And he's like playing in one of the trains and it's just like everybody's jumping car to car and it's like kooky and spooky and crazy. It was like that. Yeah, I didn't see that, but to me, it was more like Polar Express, right? Where there's like a lot of like, so we're explaining this poorly. There's different cars, and there's like DJs in every single car, and there's bars and there's servers, and it was really exciting. We weren't allowed to actually move our car because of um, logistic reasons. I don't think they really thought it through. There was a lot of people, but we didn't need to leave our car because yeah. our car was the best car because we had our best friends there, and we're having a great time. And we could see Disclosure was on this train. I'm not kidding. Disclosure was in the car in front of us. So and we could see them through the window. And Sophie Tucker. Sophie Tucker, yeah. I couldn't pick them out in a crowd, but I can listen to that music and jump up and down. <laughs> um, something really funny that happened on this trip was um, our friend Rod, who you may know from TikTok and Instagram, uh, a millennial king, he kept ordering Palomas. And... If you're familiar with the Paloma, it's to me it's grapefruit and tequila. It's it's a little bitter. It's kind of it's a nice little mixer in between because there's no carbonation. But when they he ordered that, they brought him this blue drink, and they're like, he was like, "What's that?" And he's they're like, "Oh, this is the Paloma." And he's like, "Okay." And that's that wasn't a Paloma. Right, and we're literally in tequila, so who are we to argue? Who are we to argue in the motherland? Yeah. So he's throwing them back left and right, left and right. He has about four of them. And then at one point, me and him go up to the bar to get a drink together. And when somebody else had ordered the same drink, the Paloma, we watch the bartender open a can. The blue part of the drink was an energy drink. And Rod has had maybe six of them. So not a vodka Red Bull, but a, a blast tequila. <laughs> yes, literally. Yeah, they were good though. Yeah, they were good. They were really good. They I think didn't it's stop just, when we ordered another. It's just like funny. So if you guys ever want to order a drink, just call it whatever because they do yeah. a tequila. They're like, it is what it is. And who are we to who are we to complain? Exactly. Another exciting thing about drinks there in um I think maybe Mexico in general, they're really into squirt. Oh my god, where are squirters? Stand up. Squirtaholics. So squirt is like a lemon lime soda. I think it's very much along the lines of a Mountain Dew. Oh, what would you say that? I would say like a milkier Mountain Dew in, in like that, opacity. No. In opacity. Don't. Th that was the wrong word. Milky? 
in opacity. Yeah. What, you can't just keep saying the word opacity. Like, it's not exactly clear, but it also might be because it was in a green bottle. So Mountain Dew isn't clear either. Yeah. It's more of like, yeah, there's some juices in there. It's juicy. I was drinking a lot of Jose Cuervo with the squirt. Mm-hmm. I, I was getting the squirts. Yeah. Oh my god, I was I was outside, I was squirting. Oh I was inside, god. I was squirting. I'll never forget when my grandfather was watching us one time and I had a sour stomach. I always have. And he asked me if I ever had this if I was having the squirts. And me and my brother Jackson will talk about that once a year and go, got the squirts. Cause when we were younger, we looked at him when he said that, and I was like, Grandpa, that's foul. I need you to take a step back. I'm watching Deal or No Deal. I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> That's so gross, isn't that, Grandpa? It it is gross, Grandpa. But <laughs> it was also the truth. <laughs> That's gross, Grandpa. <laughs> that is gross, Grandpa. Yeah, he's a gross Grampy. Um, actually, rest his rest his soul. He has passed. Oh. There was so the big part of the trip was the fact that they're kind of Jose Cuervo appears to be trying to launch their own music festival. Yeah. They're in year five, kind of a hard five years to do it during COVID. I think they they launched it the year before COVID yeah. and then they had to skip oh, COVID. That sucks. I know. It's called Akamba and it's like a DJ festival. And there are some obviously like Hispanic acts too, because it's based it's based in Guadalajara tequila. It's, it's, it's tequila. in tequila. It's in tequila. So I think they're trying to really get this festival off the ground. And I think that was the real reason why we were there to post there. Yeah. And it was fun. Oh my god, it was so fun. Also it was so fun. I don't know if they strategically tied this which they probably did but when we arrived it was golden hour it was the most golden hour i have seen ever in my entire life so as we're entering they have like all these flags and stuff and it's just like the most beautiful lighting yeah i think because golden hour probably looks best against the setting of a desert it does it really it's heightening up those colors it was stunning. this was my first ever music festival i've never been to one incredible what do you think um, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I don't think music festivals in general are for me. Full disclosure, like they, we were like VIPs of the event. Yeah, so we had, it was a brand trap. Yeah, so I had seats. So I don't, I don't think I could go to like Coachella and and be like in in the crowd sweating my ass off. I can go to a festival at eight p.m. for five hours after the sun's gone down, right? And vibe sitting on a couch. Of course I can, but I think festival culture in general has never really like been a thing for me because of the lack of um comfort we got interviewed by the jose cuervo team on like a street team i haven't seen it and i'm avoiding it like the yeah plague. i don't want to see it and they asked zach and i questions about like our our experience and whatever whatever and you were giving really good answers like straightforward and i was like a little too drunk and a little too silly and they were like what was your most memorable <laughs> festival moment and i was like i threw up during beyonce i was stuck in a porta potty and you were like i just love to like share this experience with my friends and my family and everybody's just vibing at the same time and it was so good that in the middle of i was like can you stop like this is like i sound like such a babbling no, idiot no that you were really i think that's fresh because i think you were actually being really funny and i had to lie in that moment and say because she said what's your most memorable festival experience i just said i've never been to one yeah, I do so like i said that. hopefully tonight it's already been so amazing yeah and I that's had to, like, like switch it. i didn't want to lie you're so good at that and yours was yours was really funny you were feeling funky and that's what they wanted you think jose Quervo brought you there and was like put a suit on like you were good you're fine i'm getting better at it i remember when i would do like interviews for companies and stuff and they would ask questions like what's something like crazy and silly about you i was just like i thought they were being honest so i'd be like uh say like the most wild thing oh no and then they're like answer. no like how does that apply to your job that you're applying for and i'm like well then don't ask me and don't tell me to genuinely be myself if you can't handle it actually i don't think this position's right for me yeah and then you interviewed them yeah for their job yeah i'm like hey let me climb this corporate ladder and get on top of you bud so the festival's good Festival's great. Yeah. And then another really fun thing that we did the next day was we went to like where they plant the Jose Cuervo agave. And agave is really similar to like an aloe plant, but blue. And they grow to be really huge. So how they do it is they cut off all those like juicy stalks and with these like really sharp, sharp blades. And the people who do that are like humidors, like really traditional kind of like cowboys kind of. And they 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 shuck the whole thing off because they're really pointy. And then the the root, which kind of reminds me of like a nutty pineapple, almost like a walnut ass kind of thing. And they take that and then they burn that, they roast it, and then then they like puree they juice it. it. Yeah, I think they, they, they squeeze it. I think they press it. But it's the root, it's like this the balls of the agave. 
Yeah. The testes. Exactly. The one, the test is, <laughs> yeah, is where we're getting the tequila from. So we went there. It was 100 degrees. I was sweating. And it's one of those places that's so hot that when you step in the shade, it, it feels 20 degrees cooler. I, I started getting burned you after were. like three minutes in the sun. It yeah. was really intense. But um, but yeah, it was really cool because also I'm the type of person that obviously you know me. I like to do some research. I like to know how things work. Yeah. Even totally. if I lie to myself or not. So this whole time, my entire life, everybody's like, it's agave. It's blue agave. Here is a, a syrup made from agave. And I'm like, oh, of course, like agave. Like I get it. But getting to go there and see them actually literally like hoist them up out of the ground. And then of course I'm wondering, I'm like, okay, well, what's in there? Like, is it like a coconut? He sliced it open for us and like chopped it into like little pieces and invited us to come like take a little bite. It so was good. It was so funny. We all went to grab a little piece and I look at John's hand. I'm like, "What are you burying for winter? What are you doing of it? Why'd you have? Why'd you take so much of it? I we all took one little piece. You had a handful. I know. When you were all making me feel, Erica's like, "Oh my god, she said just take a little, take a little." So I vlogged it. There's and you 50 can see, people, and you can see it in the vlog that I I went to pick a small piece and when I pinched it, it came. It was like the claw game, like what you would want in a claw game, but I didn't want it in this claw game. It grabbed onto a <laughs> sister piece and they were stuck, but I was like, I already touched it. I'm oh, not going to put it twins. back. Yeah. So, and sh everybody's staring at me. So I'm not going to like put it like, oh, Ew, also like so the gross. whole, you can't put it back. the cast of like too hot to handle or everyone who was there on the same trip as us or whatever. What was that? Um, it's a show by the CW called Lovers and Liars. Yeah, and somebody was it's from... It's in the Too Hot to Handle universe. No, but other people were from um, Love Island. There were people there from Love Island. No, I don't know. No, no, that's that's not right. That's not that's right. That's not Ellen. true, Ellen. That's not true. Ellen. I believe... So it's... I believe... The sh yes, you're right. The show Lovers and Liars, it's like... It, I think it brings casts together from different franchises. I'm not sure. I don't know. Everyone there is so hot. Like the hottest people, right? You could and think then of. I'm I'm up there standing in front of everybody, being gluttonous, pulling too much no, agave out of the you're harvest. You're hot, but the, these, the sacred harvest. You're hot. I'm okay. hot, but these people, we have to acknowledge. Let's be honest with ourselves. We did not compete with these people on physicality. No, that's why I planned a busy day when the pool hour came around. <laughs> so anyway, I grabbed too much of it, and it's in the vlog. If you want to go see Patreon.com/slash Cam Counselors, and I ate it, and it it was it was interesting. But that wasn't the coolest thing we ate at that oh experience. My oh my God. Great Campers, segue. buckle your asses up down. Put your seatbelt on and check it and make sure it's locked in because this is crazy. Jonathan, what was at the taco lunch at the agave field? Authentic. Off the cob. Wheat la coche. Wheat la coche. We had the real, the universe like, how crazy is that? So crazy. I didn't even think that we were going to like, because uh, people have been tagging us. If you guys don't don't know and you, somehow you missed the episode, you're missing a great one. I forget what it was called. But if it's on YouTube. Yeah, we were corn smut sluts in one episode. Is that what it was called? Oh, uh, my strange addiction. I'm addicted to corn fungus. Something like that. Yeah. Not that long ago where we talked about um, wheat la coche and exactly what it is. <laughs> nervous to say I, Now I'm nervous because I say it wrong every time. And I just, I don't know. I'm just being myself. Wheat la coche. So it's essentially like a, a fungus that grows on a corn. And we had been eating it here in New York uh, when we're not at Camp Shady Birch, but we didn't know what it was and we found out what it was. And then we actually got to see it in real life. And hey, I ordered it and I ate it and I loved it and we vlogged it. I, I want to go back to the place that we go in New York and try it again and really look at it because I, I when I opened up the one in Tequila, Mexico, I could tell that these were blue kernels. Yes. And um, nobody cared that we were eating it except us. Yeah, no, I mean, nobody it's, would have been gassed up like it, we were. Campers, if you were there, you, you would have gassed I, us I, up. Oh my God, I wish the campers were there. I know. Because we, you guys would have been, we all have been flipping out together. And no one there was a camper, so they didn't care. Nobody, like, really, the people at our table, they didn't really know what it was. And was they like, didn't pick mind. it up. They didn't get it. Never like, mind. Yeah, yeah. I don't have time for this. We'll tell you guys instead. It was incredible. It, it was, was really so cool, cool to get it, though. It was, because I didn't expect it, and it was, like, such a little treat. And I was, like, looking at the little menu board, and I'm like, ah! Another thing we didn't expect, this was really cool, Jose Cuervo let each of us plant our own agave. Like, we got to dig the little hole by ourselves, put the agave bulb in there, like the little baby. Such a bulb. You're right. It was bulbous. And then we got to put our name on a board and stick it in. So we have ours together. And it was so cute. And then it depends on how the weather goes and how, like, the rainfall goes in the next few years. But it could be, like, 10 to 18 years. It You could be sipping on it in a margarita. Yeah, they're definitely – I'm going to be realist here. Don't. They're not, they're not going to stay there. 
I think they are. Did you see how close we all planted ours together and how big they get? There's no way that they would keep the the plants wouldn't survive. The humidor scoops it out. E- and then because they were we, they were in rows, there were rows behind it. Yeah, but see how far apart those were in comparison. Well, I think they're going to stay there forever. And okay, well, know, it was a sweet gesture. On yeah, them. I thought they it was had so us cool. put our little plaques on there, and I'm like, this. The minute we pull off this property, they're ripping these all out and actually using them. I don't. But we got that. our photo. So we did. We got our photo. We got our video. I named them both Mary Kate and Ashley, since you want to be a pessimist about it. That my, I named mine Zach, and you named yours Jonathan. But in our hearts, we can name them Mary Kate and Ashley. That's really fun. Yeah. It's a That's great day. In my heart, in my soul. Yeah, the trip was great. We had a fabulous farewell dinner. We danced under the Mexican moonlight. We made incredible memories. There's a lot more that's on the vlog. The vlog is so funny. It's so great. Um, but I think like, do you want to cover anything else from the trip? Um, uh, well, we did do a silent disco, which I have never participated in, in my entire life. Yeah. What better place than Mexico? That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, I will say. Um, and nothing surprised me about it. I think it was good too because we were. It was at the festival when we were there, the Silent Disco, um, and we had like other things to do. So we stayed for like two or three songs, and then we bopped. I don't know if I would go out of my way to go to a Silent Disco. I think some sometimes like l- activities in life surprise you. You learn something about yourself, or you didn't see something coming. If you've never been to one, you can understand what's happening. You have headphones, so. That's really all it is. Yeah, and you can and you couldn't. We couldn't talk to each other, so we were just yeah. kind of like mouthing things. To know Jonathan and I, to know that we're we don't stop talking to each other. All we do is just talk to each other all day long, and then for an hour and a half every week, we do it here just with a camera on. Um, <laughs> but no, that was fun. The yeah. whole trip was fun. It was fun. It was a blast compared to last year when we went in the Patron one. Like that one was just like we drank too much and we fought, and it was just like crazy. This one we behaved and we made memories. We and, and we fun. left early. We skipped a yeah. party because we knew our bodies just needed like a minute. Are we maturing? Is that what that is? I think sometimes life, um, you learn lessons. Exactly. And when life hands you agave, make tequila. This episode of Cam Counselor's podcast is sponsored by Me Undies. I have old pairs of underwear from seven years ago. I'm not proud of it, but it's true. All different materials, shapes, sizes, and the fits are inconsistent. Every morning I open my underwear drawer and I say, This is scary. This is spooky. I need something fresh. But there's one brand I always reach for. That is Me Undies. I got my first pair of Me Undies a couple months ago and I have been obsessed ever since. They fit incredibly and I can honestly tell you Me Undies are buttery soft. They're breathable and stretchy, making them ideal for all day wear. They have a ton of solid color choices, or if you're feeling funky like me, there's a bunch of fun prints to choose from. Me Undies sizes include extra small to 4XL, guaranteeing a comfortable and flattering cut for every body. But Me Undies isn't just about underwear. They also have a lounge collection featuring comfy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and they even have activewear. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash counselors. That's MeUndies.com slash C-O-U-N-S-E-L-O-R-S for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements, campers. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed in mainstream media, and we're bringing it right to you on a hot platter that we want you to spread like wildflower. 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 Wait, that's cute. Wildflower. Yeah, that wildflowers can Wait, spread. Wait, that is cute. Are we changing it up? I think, yeah, because wildfire, let's be honest, like in a camp setting, nightmare. Well, let me just say what's going to be easiest for me to say, because that's like a, okay. it, honestly, the reason why I said that is because I have a really big tongue. They used to call me Big Tongue Terry mm. when I was in my early 20s when I used to work in Reno. Yeah. I was a mechanic who also doubled as a spa worker okay love that and i I support so we're gonna read some (laughs) articles wait i'm obsessed with reno what's going on there it's so freaky it's so sexy it's so seedy you know where are the reno girls at yeah stand up reno girls reno girls you know what reno girls it was so funny when we said new jersey girls stand up two weeks ago about the the promise episode oh yeah yeah oh wow we have a lot of oh my god sorry you guys really corrected us in paramus it's promise. Oh shit. We still don't know. 
A lot um, of New Jersey girls were like, hey, that's my town. Like even um, someone from Podcast One, one of our producers Christine. was like, hey, I literally, that's my hometown. I was like, that girl, you're crazy. But I just like love seeing all the Jersey girls stand up. So now it's time for the Reno girls. Yeah. Stand, stand up, up, Reno. Um, Jonathan, what's your story this week? So this story is coming from the Los Angeles Times and it's by Co- uh, Karen Garcia. And I'm going to read the title at the end. Okay. So there's this guy and his name is ATN Constable. <laughs> I love that. And he's lived in the city of Seaside, California for almost 30 years. Wow. Um, So if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put a picture of him up. But if you're an audio only listener, I'll paint a picture for you. That's foreshadowing. He's like, he looks like an old hipster boomer that lives in California. He's got that California laid back kind of style. He's got a lot of tie dye in his wardrobe. He's got long hair. uh, It's it's like a shoulder length, like a bob. But not quite a bo- maybe a Bobby like Jerry Garcia. Yeah, kind of. And he's like a little. He's smitten. I don't think that's the right What's, word at all. That, wait, no. I want you to unpack that. What's um, that mean? He's smitten. So there's a picture of him, and he doesn't know what to, to do with his hands. And I think I was thinking mitten. Is he smirking? And he's smirking. So I was thinking smirking hands, s- mittens, smitten. Yeah, and but sometimes when there. you're smitten, you smirk. It's kind of the natural right. progression to be smitten to smirk. Right. So I can see where you're coming from. Exactly. So just keeping that in mind, like, okay. I don't know. Okay. I just think a visual for him is like fun and silly. So being the cool laid back Californian that he is, he's an ocean dweller. So he boats. And over the course of the three decades that he's lived in the city, he has always parked a sailboat in his driveway. But he currently has a smaller boat that he's had for four years, which is like a normal, like a, a motorboat. A dinghy. Did someone giggle out there? You perv. Grow up. No, I would have giggled at that too. Um, so he he's been having this boat. He's had it for four years. Have never had a problem. Oh, sorry. It's, and it's 19 feet long. It's an Arima 19 Sea Ranger. If, if we have any boaters out there, it's giving Bass Pro Shop. And it's named Might as well. You know, they just like. Is it things. Might as Swell? Oh my God! It should be Might as Swell. It probably it's not. is. No, it's not. I have it written down. It says Might you as ha- Well. Did you see the picture of it? Written I did. Back? I did. And it should be Might as Well. You um, are so clever. Well, I get it from you. My uncle has a uh, boat, and I'm not kidding. It's called the Gabagool. Oh, that's fun. My my uncle has a boat, and it's just called um, Rebecca Ann after his wife. Boring. My aunt Becky's like, fuck you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Becky. Like you, love you, Aunt Beck. Uh, so, I love uh, honestly. I love you, Aunt Becky. She's yeah, a sweetie. She's, she's great. I take that back. I retract it. She works at Target. She vibes. Oh my god, she is the best. She's so sweet. <laughs> okay, back to our story. So one day, Constable receives a letter. From it's the not, constable. <laughs> no, it's not from the constable. This is his last name. Let's not get confused. And it's not just any letter. It's a notice. Ugh, the worst kind. Yeah, I know. From City Hall. Boo. The notice demands that he complies with mun- municipal, <laughs> excuse me, with a municipal code uh, regarding driveway parking, which restricts non-passenger vehicles, such as boats. So basically, his boat could be in that position but it has to be out of public view because it's essentially an eyesore is what they're Why calling it. Why does it matter? If you own the property, I can't I'm park sorry. my boat in the driveway. I'm sorry. Is our city not called Seaside, bitch? The fuck? Like Seaside? You, Seaside is Seaside, California is the name of the city. I'm sorry. Oh, you want me to put my boat away in a, in a city or a town, whatever, a county called Seaside? So there's the rule. Okay. But what what is the reason behind the rule? That's what they, I would call the government. Inside. They just want, they want it out of sight. It has to be parked in either a garage or six uh, or behind a six foot tall fence to keep it out of public view. And if Constable does not comply with the notice slash demand from the city, he's going to be hit with his first offense fine of $100. And if he continues not to, the uh, I do believe that the dollar amount goes up, but he's going to be continuously fined. Is it is the problem the smaller boat or the or the sailboat? The sailboat's gone. He's got he sold that boat. It's the small boat that doesn't have a sail that if you put up, it's not taller than six feet when it's on its little wheel thing that it's on. Um, so a six foot fence would hide it. Okay. And also I want to mention that the neighbors are not, um, they're not fucking little telltale rats. Nobody call it, like every, nobody cares. I don't believe it. Well, I'll tell you, hold on. I, I, here we go. The neighbors are chill. Everybody's friends. Nobody cares. But the city, city hall hired a quote, community enhancement staffer. AKA like an arc. And it is their uh, job to go around and identify code enforcement violations throughout the city that need to be 
remedied. Dox the worker now. Right. So Constable said, uh, quote, I've been here for a while and I've had tall sailboats in the past. I've never had an issue. Never knew that there was even a code that was being broken. He stared. Okay. In this interview, he did a couple of different interviews with the news once the story broke. Uh, You'll see why in a second. But he was like looking around the neighborhood and he was like, hey, that home has a fenced in boat and it, quote, doesn't necessarily look good in my estimation. <laughs> so he's like... His neighbor's like, fuck you, first of all. <laughs> yeah, he's like, sorry, you... It looks awful. Also, it wasn't clear in the article if he had a nor- like a gravel driveway or what the driveway was. But essentially, if he was going to build this fence, he was going to have to pave the driveway too. So it's going to cost him money, you know, that the city's not going to give him because it is his house and it's in violation of the code. So he's like annoyed, but he also doesn't want to make a fuss necessarily. Constable is a clever man. And he hits up his next door neighbor. Oh, I was going to look up how to pronounce this. Hanif Pani. P-A-N-N-I. I'm sorry. But he's a cool younger guy. He's a DJ. He would have loved it in Mexico partying with us. And he's also a hyper-realistic um, mural artist. So like I looked, I found his website and his Instagram and he makes, standing far away from them, they look like photographs. Essentially is what I'm getting at. So they devise a plan that they're going to put up the six foot tall fence, but then paint it to look like the boat is still parked oh in the God, driveway. So funny. So I looked at the headline when I was looking for articles for this. I saw a picture of it. And it really just looks like a picture of a boat parked in a driveway. And when I clicked on it, I was like, oh my God, his painting got me. Like it literally, it looks like the boat is still sitting there in the driveway. Does the town have any ordinances against like that kind of behavior? Um, like, can you have boat murals or is that against the law too? I'll get there in one second. So the feedback was almost instantaneous from the neighbors and social media users who applauded the pair for their creativity and humor. Other neighbors have already asked um, the artist to do one for them. They were like, wait, this is fun and freaky. Can you like do one for me? Not that looks like a boat, but a different mural. Good. He's getting business. He's getting business. That's awesome. So uh, Panny said, (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to be. P-A-N-N-I. 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 Panny. 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 The artist said, creativity is Always a good tool to use against bureaucracy. Fuck yeah. Wait, dead ass though. (laughs) If it's done thoughtfully with rules in mind. So he's like, we're not breaking the rules. We're actually complying to the rules. Yeah. But we're also sending a message. And send a message they did. Uh, But some people at City Hall were like, what the fuck? This is not what we were trying to have happen. However... The Seaside Police Chief, Nick Borges, he chimed in and he's like, I'm not offended by the mural. This is a very creative response to the city's code. He said that it does help cities like us identify what city codes should be enforced in a certain way. So he's like, hey, maybe the code is BS. This is a good way of pointing it out. So they kind of actually did something. And ATN Constable's case was closed out and no further actions against him will be taken. Wow. And that title of the article was, hold on, I just lost my place. Here it is. Ordered to put his boat behind a fence. He added a mural that'll make you do a double take. And double take I did. That's my story. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for listening. What have you got? My story is from CNN by Issy Ronald. The title is Twin Who Fought Off Crocodile to Save Her Sister Receives a Royal Bravery Award. Wow. So British twin sisters Georgia and Melissa Laurie were enjoying a hot June in Mexico on a holiday three years ago. They were swimming in a river in Puerto Escondido when Melissa spotted a crocodile in the water close by. Panic set in and they began desperately swimming away. Georgia reached the bank, but as Melissa was being pulled out by another member of the group, the crocodile reappeared and dragged her under the water. She literally was coming out of the water and got pulled under by the crocodile. This is not princess girl behavior. No, it's not. And princess girl wants to set the record straight by saying that she's a caiman and that it is a different species. And even though this is kind of her like genetic makeup, this is not her. And she does swim openly in the lake. So if you're out there, like, don't worry. She's kind of just like doing her thing. So yeah. And for our new listeners who I don't want anybody to feel left out of an inside joke, Princess Girl is our Cayman slash alligator who lives in our lake here at Camp Shady Birch. And she wears a wedding dress. And that's all the context I can give you. Georgia, now 31, plunged into the water and twice fought off the reptile to save her twin sister. Georgia initially found Melissa floating unconscious face down in the water and revived her before the crocodile returned and attacked again. I'm sorry, how old are they? They're like, um, in their late, they're like our age. Oh. This was three years ago, so she's literally 28 when this happened. Okay, oh my god, I thought they were like nine-year-olds. No, they're twin sisters. Okay. That doesn't mean they're not nine. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that was giving it's Pirates of the Caribbean. You don't remember the scene. At first, Georgia was able to fend the animal off, punching it with one hand while keeping her sister's head above the water with the other. Oh my god! But the crocodile, the crocodile returned for a third time. Get a fucking hobby. This time, the reptile death rolled Melissa, a maneuver in which a crocodile rolls over with its prey in an attempt to drown them. But Georgia was able to punch it again. She sustained bite injuries to her hand, but the impact was hard enough that the crocodile eventually released her sister. The crocodile was really going for it. Yeah, the- um, a passing boat rescued them from the water, but there was still a 25-minute ride to the shore mm. and another 20-minute journey to the hospital, oh, during which time Melissa fought her own battle for survival. The twin said on their... That's what the tw- that's what um, Georgia said on their Just Giving page. She's like, go find me. Mm-hmm. Um, she underwent emergency surgery before being placed in med- before being placed in a medically induced coma after she developed sepsis in the hospital, but eventually made a full recovery. For both sisters, the scars from that day still linger from that act of bravery. Georgia is now receiving the King's Gallantry Medal. Incredible. I think they're like English people. Yeah. So uh, the award from King Charles III recognizes acts in which civilians put themselves at risk in an attempt to save someone's life. Um, Essentially like a civilian Purple Heart. Yeah. Right? Oh my God. That's incredible. So Georgia told the UK's PA media news agency, um, it's a silver lining to have come out of this terrible ordeal. It kind of softens the whole traumatic experience. She then continues saying, What's made this story so incredible is Melissa's unwavering bravery throughout it all because she was so strong during it. And I don't think I would be um, here without her. She really gave me the strength to keep fighting. That's so sweet. She said, the further it gets away, the less it feels real. Because you think about it, it does sound like a horror movie, but it is a part of our lives. It's a part of the tapestry of our lives. Wow. She said, let me give you some poem at the end of it. Everybody snap. Campers. (laughs) That's incredible. That's so scary. Well. Oh, there's more. Now, both Georgia and Melissa are preparing to tackle the Thames Marathon, a 13 kilometer or eight miles swim in one of the UK's longest rivers in August to raise money for PTSD UK and Compañeros and Salud, a Mexican charity that provides aid and medical training to impoverished communities in Chiapas. I think that's how you pronounce the town or the area. Um, So, wow. They're like, Okay. They're doing something with it. And they're getting back in the river, so that's good for them. Well, there's no, I don't think there's any crocodiles in the Thames, but... I, I don't know. We I don't, don't know, know either. That, but that's crazy. That's scary. I think it's also, like, definitely... A, Sorry. I think it's also definitely, like, a twin thing, too, where it's like... I, yes! I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I would react to the moment. I don't. I love you. I don't think I would... I, I, w- I want to sit here and be like, of course I'd jump in and save you from a crocodile. If a crocodile already had you in its clutches, I would assume that you were dead. I would grab a stick from the shore. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I would do. Like, be honest. No, yeah, I, I don't take that offensively. We just don't know how we would do. Because in my head, I want to be like, I am brave, mama. I am strong, mama, and like I could handle it. But in fight or flight situations, I I've freeze. Been, I've been proven to freeze as well. I've been proven to freeze, and we hey, can't hold I'm that against saying. each other. No, you can't. No. So if a croc's got me. The, just like, just watch me when I'm spinning. But that's my final performance is when I do that death roll out. But Jonathan and I, one thing I know, know about ourselves, we have, we would have never gotten in that river. And there's oh, no shade against yeah. Melissa and Georgia. No, no, no. But I yeah, know we're that not I'm blaming. No, no, no. no. It's just, it couldn't be me. But that situation wouldn't happen to us because we wouldn't have been in the river in the first place. I yeah. can't swim. Jonathan hates dark water. I hate. And this is why. And this is a reason why. It's things like this. But but brave, brave Georgia. Bra- Georgia is so brave. Yeah. And I really think it comes back to what you just said. It's a twin thing. And she also gave the props to Melissa when she was doing her. Ex- she's like, Melissa's been so strong and like so, you know, they're just one in the same. They were in the same amniotic sack. This is going to be a movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. It is. They didn't release it yet, but... Okay. Lyle, Lyle, Crocodile, too. <laughs> um, we'll take Princess Girl to the, to the opening night. She'll wear her bridal gown. <laughs> oh, she can't get out of it. She's sewn in. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. I'm going to go first, as I always do. We should switch it up. Do you want to go first? No. Okay. So I'm going to go first, as, as I always do. So what am I telling to take what a hike? What are you telling to take a hike this week? It's a question everybody's been asking Literally, me. there's cameras behind the, the camera, and they're freaking out. They're going, Jonathan, Jonathan, 
vagina. They said it three times. Two of them got up. Uh, what is your dessert? Okay, so what I'm telling to take a hike are large pieces of fruit in a fruit salad. That is so valid. So, okay. I love a fruit salad. It's nature's candy. It's sweet. <laughs> it's healthy. It's a healthy alternative. For Can you build me your ideal fruit salad? Yeah. Okay. We got strawberries, obviously. Sliced proportionately. And then we've also got, I like cantaloupe. I know some people say cantaloupe ruins it. I think that's the same as cilantro. You know how people hate cilantro? An interesting take. I, I see that. I love cantaloupe as well. Because I can eat it. I think some things I'll eat and I'll be like, I I enjoy this, but I can see how some people wouldn't. Cantaloupe, I don't get that. And that's why it's yeah. same with um, cilantro. So that's why I think maybe there's like a taste bud thing or something. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I would, okay, blueberries. I love when blueberries are in there, but those little fuckers are hard to get on a fork. They really are. Yeah, you're skewing them at the bottom. Yeah, I like honeydew. That's good to me. See, honeydew, I can pass on. And it doesn't have to be in there. It's not a staple. But if it's there, it's a plus. And honestly, honeydew was the catalyst to me making this. And we'll circle back in a moment. What about pineapple? Oh, uh, oh, a pineapple can do really make it the best. Because the juices, when it mixes in with things, and it gets like a little strawberry stain. So it's like you can see where they were kissing. You don't like it? I think I'm allergic. Oh, it makes your mouth itchy. My mouth it isn't itchy. It kind of stings. Oh. Yeah, it's not itchy. It's more of like a burn. Hmm. And it's so mild, and I'll still eat it. But I think I have a mild allergy. Yeah. Um, I should get that checked out. You know what's a really exciting fruit salad when you see it? What? When you see a little kiwi in there. Oh, my God. Nobody does that anymore. Who's doing kiwis in fruit salads? Do it more. Like, it's not it's not necessary. No. But when I see it, I love it. I also love a sliced banana in there. Like a little sword in a, in a cocktail drink. It's not necessary, but when it's there, bitch, True. do you appreciate it? I think banana... No. Okay. I draw the line of bananas. My mom loves it. But a banana, and I love you, mom. But I just... I liked it when she put it in that this weekend. I did. I Because she preserves it in honey. No, but I just like the banana, I'm saying. Yeah, because she preser- cause it doesn't get brown and weird. Well, and I can understand why people don't like to look at a brown banana. Yeah. It's off-putting. And but I if like- you can get behind... I like the sweetness and the cream. Speaking of pudding, my mom puts a little bit of vanilla pudding sauce in it. That was. Can you help me communicate that? First with the of all, she doesn't do that anymore. She did it a long time ago. Okay, it was a big miscommunication on the couch. You yeah. two were in a spat. Yeah, we came to the conclusion that your mother, in order, instead of putting sugar on her fruit salad or like the strawberries specifically, she would sprinkle on sugar-free vanilla pudding. And this was in the nineties, yeah. So it was you like, said it was Jello, but we we decided that the reason why you thought that was because she was buying the Jello branded. Sugar and that's pudding. probably what it was. And, and I couldn't confusing. read. You didn't and I know. still can't. It's but really she was like, I'm not read. putting jello on the fruit salad. Yeah. Okay. So ba- anyway, back to my take a hike. So when I'm getting a fruit salad, it is it's not a fork and knife situation. It's was your f- mother cutting up too big a fruit? No, this wasn't my mom. This was at the airport. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Yes. So I I'm fork only fork and fork only true uh, of course you, some, usually if i'm on the go it's a plastic fork so that's even more flimsy right mm. so i don't want to be digging into my fruit salad and be having a giant piece because i only have three options there i will take the fork and i'll jab it in the middle and i eat it like it's the goddamn medieval times or i can ask my friend next to me if they have like a, a, a pocket knife <laughs> or something or i could just leave it there and not eat it because i can't i can't stuff it down my face it's a choking hazard i don't know the hymen maneuver i don't know how to do that if i'm choking what if i'm alone you said hymen maneuver i don't the hymen maneuver i don't know how to do, what if i'm eating it alone that's a dangerous snack to be eating alone what do you have no teeth chew no grow if up it's, look this it should be sliced. <laughs> should you never eat alone? Can Jonathan? you just be on my side? I need you to be on my side. He's used to salmon. That's why that shit melts. Yeah, in your mouth. I need everything needs to be chopped down, and it's really up to the chef. Whatever's going on in the kitchen, <laughs> the chef. He's calling the shots. It's a, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to a lazy chef, and that's not me being lazy because I don't have access. I'm not using the knife. I'm not usually having a knife. You can call me many things. You can call me talented. You can call me ugly, fruity even, but you can't call me lazy because if I had a knife. I would, and there was no knife given in the situation that you're referring to. I understand. You. So what was the culprit? Who was it? Was it Honeydew? It was Honeydew. And I'm not going to say who made it. Is that if there's one fruit in the salad that's a little too big that's going to piss you off, would Honeydew make you the most upset? Yeah, because it's it's the hardest melon. Mm. Arguably, it's, it's, it's harder than watermelon rind. It might even be hot watermelon rind. I don't even know. But it's hard to, to cut. It's hard to chew. It's rough. 
I don't like when the strawberries are too big. It's off-putting to me. And they are too. And that's another thing. It's like, <laughs> cut them down. We were in the park with my sister and there was a really big strawberry and I threw it out. Oh, and it was we pissed at you. so pissed at me. We were walking through it a nice, a GMO, beautiful, sunny day. It was a motherfucking berry. It was a big this berry. Is poisonous for our bodies. I'm throwing it and I'm giving it to a squirrel. I literally was eyeing that up. And he he didn't even ask me. He just flung it into the grass in, in Central Park. If the strawberry is that big, for me, it's almost foul. Because I'm like, this is this is not normal. Did we order Papa John's later? Like, what are, are we concerned about putting a, a GMO strawberry into this body? Get me Papa John's tonight. I will, but oh my God, wait, that strawberry should have been mine. Yeah, let's get no, Papa John's on strawberries. Honestly, the way, guys, let's talk about this for a second. The way Jonathan looked at me when I, and, it, and you know what, they're like, I don't, you typically don't like when I get stuff out for snacks, you like never eat. Like I feel like you're like you only eat meals. You're not much of a snacker sometimes. And that's true. And we're true. on the go. And I'm like, this is I just know your eating habits and you're just not gonna like take a giant strawberry. And I wait, wouldn't have, let's talk about I wouldn't have bought that it. That one, there's first of all, we're walking into the park. There's no knife. What was your plan for that strawberry? That was not thin in your mouth. No, no, no. So I could eat it like a normal strawberry, because that's what it was. It wasn't was it sliced. No. It was huge. It was big. The mangoes were sliced, but it was mm. big and it still had the tail on it. It wasn't um That's foul again. It wasn't boneless. So I could have pinched it by the <laughs> by the little green sprout and yeah. I could have okay. eaten it you that could. way. Right. But I'm I sorry. know you, you didn't do it on purpose. I and didn't. I felt bad after because I was like, why I did know. I do that? And there you, you the way you flung it, I could tell it was done without thought or malice. And that Thank made you. a squirrel really happy. Oh my god, that squirrel ate for a season. Yeah, he said, You guys aren't gonna fucking believe what I just had for lunch. And he's like covered in red sauce, and the other squirrels are like, No, I, I can literally believe it because you smell like a fucking strawberry. Yeah, he's smucker's gonna, ass. He's gonna get the squirrel. He's gonna get the squirts. Okay, so that's my um, that's my take a hike. Did I have anything else to say about this? If you do, that's pretty amazing. I think that's it. I think it really just boils down to the responsibility that lies with the chef who prepared it, and I, uh, it just needs to be bite sized pieces. Also, okay, fruit salad. I don't need an apple. I'm not mad at it, but I do not need an apple in I my fruit salad. I also agree with that. There is, no, I don't. I'm not mad at it, but it seems inappropriate. It's yeah. not necessary. Yeah, especially with the skin on. It's just kind of like that piece. When I get it, I'm like, well, here goes the apple. Yeah. You know, you just got to get through it. Yeah, exactly. The only way to get through it is to get under it. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you telling to take a hike? What's pissing me off right now is the lack of innovation when it comes to hot glue guns. All right, do tell. As a society, we should be much further along in the development of hot glue guns. The hot clock has been the exact same since I was a child. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Is that copyrighted? No, I, it's my bit. I've been Hello. saying that for years on TikTok. The hot clock has had no updates since I was a child. If we can change up the water guns, we can change up the hot glue guns. Like mechanically what the fuck is going on first of all this thing is so wildly unsafe you can burn yourself at any turn they give you a little kickstand that's basically an unfolded paper clip that in the way the center of gravity with that thing it's just going to tip over it continuously is leaking the entire time oh, the whole time oh and how are we going to refill it Put a cold one in and push it through. You got to jam it. You got to jam it into a, a literal 7,000 degree little hot clock. Oh, and then when it gets on your finger? It's game over. And then as you're using it, the flyaways. The flyaways are oh, everywhere. Did you know that's how they made the cobwebs on uh, uh, Tower of Terror? Yeah, and maybe that's the only time I want to see it. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm in complete shock. I googled hot glue gun before we started this episode to see like maybe I'm wrong. No, they look the exact same. Why is nobody innovating? Why is nobody ready? Why are they so corded? Is there a cordless one? Is there a Bluetooth one? I have no idea, but I have to be close to the wall. I have to do this activity over here. Oh, they said give him a two feet cord. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my it doesn't God. even have that the little grounding plug. The third one, the third little dingleberry. I can't even, I just literally trying to put a hot glue gun on a paper plate because you know it's already going to be leaking. It's always a paper plate. It's going to fall over in the kickstand. It's going to burn you. And then it's like, and then all the glue sticks are different sizes. They don't fit. They're not universal. It is, it's literally a scam. It's a scam by Michaels. So, no, it's, a, it's also, it's not just on them, but they're not helping the cause. No. But look, you're right. Water guns, they're they're innovative. They're, they're changing. Nerf is on the scene. Nerf yeah. has been on the scene. Nerf, please. It, we're begging you. Yeah. Can Somebody we step up? Yeah, we'll get like a Nerf and hot glue gun collab. I can't. I just, I'm like, I'm a complete loss. I'm a complete loss. There's just got to be more and I'm not doing it. But I don't want to. My mom had a, my mom had a, um, a glue pot. Have you ever seen one of those before? 
What does that even mean? It, it's like for real crafters. It's like basically a hot plate and there's like a glass dish on it. And the entire thing is like a, like an open container of hot glue. How, what do you so do? You get a brush? Maybe, like, no, you glue? dip it in there. So she would do it for like floral displays and stuff like that. Oh, okay. It kind of, it's way, it's way unsafe, right? If you have a child. Right. If, if you, you have a child, but it does, up, it like, like makes sense. Like I get it. Yeah, I'm seeing it because you don't have to like, you. oh my God, my handshakes. I don't, tremors like run in my big. family too. Like, look at me, I'm shaking right now. Well, I can tell that you're pretending. I am. I was acting. <laughs> you're such an actress. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, no, that makes sense. I can see how that would be helpful. Like that doesn't need innovation to me because it's like an open container law. But this, <laughs> but like the hot clock, it needs a refresh. It does. So which is worse? Mm. I'm gonna say the fruit salad because I use I I go through that more. I'm gonna say fruit salad too. We've agreed. Yeah, I love that. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. This is the part of the show where we share who or what we're loving. Who's getting our a stamp of approval, a gold star, a hug. A gentle caress of the back of the neck. Mm. Um, John- <laughs> so that just came out of me. Like so- sometimes I have to edit out the noises that I make because I just like make noises and I'm like, Jonathan, just shut up. No, to me that felt supportive. Yeah, and so- I, I just it fell out. Mm. It did. fell right out like a fart of the mouth. Mm. I guess that would be a burp. Um, so, so I'm gonna go. What am I crushing on this week? Ventriloquists. Oh, you love that one, girl. I love. Okay, <laughs> there's this comedian and i think she's from britland across the pond Brit- across the lake britland britland the bbc <laughs> um and her name is okay wait her name is nina Conti. no it's not is it c-o-n-t-i government bible nina conti i don't know it's conti nina nina <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing i said to you when i woke up this morning i don't know what's wrong with me so anyway so she gets people she's a comedian right she gets people from the audience to come up on stage and she has a mask it's like a half mask that goes over your just your mouth and your nose so you can see the the participants eyes and it's operated in a hand pump that nina holds while she's standing with the people nina's also a ventriloquist she has clips, there's clips all over TikTok, all over Instagram, all over YouTube of her doing these comedy bits, sometimes with two people, where she's doing the talking for a um, deeper male voice, a higher female voice, and her own. And she's having what is convincingly a conversation with three people. Like, sometimes I forget. I'm like, this is funny as shit. She's doing it in a way that you can't even tell. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I saw her mouth moving, but I'm not mad because I'm like, we're all having a good time. I'm not going to be a wet sock about it, you know? But is she not so fucking funny? I feel like a lot of people probably are having a hard time grasping it because it's kind of a hard concept. Also, I had never seen her until you showed me her. But if you haven't seen it on TikTok, we'll post it on the Instagram and a clip here because it's so funny. You can go down a rabbit hole and watch her for hours. She's so talented. She's hilarious. I just think all ventriloquists, well, maybe not all, but most ventriloquists, I... Uh, respects the art of it. Who was that one guy that was on America's Got Talent and he went far? He was the only Terry person. Terry Vader. Yeah, he was the only person I ever saw in there because I was moving in the process of it. I can tell you it was the summer of 2007. Really? I And I know that as a fact. I will say the grand prize of America's Got Talent is a Las Vegas show and that feels very Vegas. So that was a really worthy choice of a winner. And that feels like a good, like we're setting you up to get a fandom. He and does. Help. He's very yeah. successful. He, he's still doing his damn thing. But really quickly, it just popped into my head. Where did this originate from? So apparently it's uh, it originated as a religious practice. The name what? comes from the uh, the Latin form of to speak to the stomach. No. So the Greeks would basically the noises produced by the stomach were thought to be the voices of the unliving who took up residence in the stomach of a ventriloquist. The ventriloquist would interpret the sounds that were coming from their own stomachs as they thought they were able to speak to the dead as well as tell the future. I'm not even kidding. Gas? Essentially, if you were a gassy bit, I would have been the best ventriloquist around. You should make that a TikTok. I really should. You sh- that's that is yeah. really interesting. And I don't know if that's a hundred percent true because I got that from Wikipedia. It does say citation needed, but I'm taking no, it, it doesn't. I'm, it does. It does, and I'm taking it as fact because that's fun and that's just lore. Misinformation is our favorite podcast. Yeah. So what are you crushing on? That it for better sure. be me. That for sure. You didn't crush on me. You crush on Lily Manuel Manuel Puppet. Man with puppet. Man with puppet. Man with puppet. 
Did you ever see that horror movie? Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only Dawes. Dawes? Dolls. Where she, oh. It's the ventriloquist who rips the tongue out of the kids in the town. I forget what it was called. Wide Awake? Something like that. I haven't seen it. Pet Cemetery. I don't know. Anyway, what are you crushing on? I'm crushing on Texas Roadhouse. Yes. I saw a video last night and it just kind of like rocked my world. I am craving Texas Roadhouse like a wild boar right yeah. now. Feral hog. It's all I can think about right now. And I want to walk you through what I need. Okay. I want to crack open a peanut. I want to throw six dinner rolls down my gullet with the cinnamon butter. Mm. I want the traditional margarita with the kicker, sugar on the rim. Yes. I want to order the chicken critters with the homemade honey dressing, but I want to start with the Caesar salad and then I'll probably do a loaded baked potato. I crave that mineral. <laughs> I crave that mineral. Too. I literally crave Roadhouse right now. Honorable mentions are the cactus blossom. I also love the chicken critter salad. The steaks are really good too. I love that they call them chicken critters. Like how fun. They could have been like, we could have called them fingers. We could have called them whatever. But like chicken critter. Back in the day, they used to be better. They changed the recipe. But I'm like, even with the new recipe formula, it's still incredible. All their dressings are made in-house. Two of my best friends worked there in high school, Carly and Mia. Mia worked there for a lot longer. Mia told me she would teach me the dance. Apparently, there's a dance. I've only ever been once, campers. My friend Mia danced competitively with Texas Roadhouse. Wait, okay, let's... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's talk it about that. So first of all... Shout out to Danvers Mass because I think they were the best team in the region. Can we talk about how, what the dance, like what is the dance? So every hour on the hour, um, a select few of the Texas Red House servers will do a line dance. It's okay. line dancing. Okay, got it, for got it, sure. Got it. They do that Joe's Crab Shack. In Sunday, oh, they do? Yeah, they do dances. What kind of dance is that Joe's Crab just Shack? What, just expressing themselves. Is it so, like a it's theme? Like, it's like 90s themed, I think. I haven't been there in a really long time. They closed down the Cotton one by Eye me. Cotton Eye Joe ass? Yeah, Cotton Eye Joe ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is line dancing, mm-hmm. and they would go in on their days off, and they would like do like they 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 close at eleven. They'd be like, okay, like dance team meet at eleven, and they'd all like get margaritas and like learn the dances. Oh my god, outside of working hours. Yeah, but it's no, but they would get paid. I think, and if they didn't, who cares? Giving extracurricular. They, but it's like it's I don't know if they got paid. Mia, chime in, please. But like Mia loved the girls. Like she like I'm pretty sure some of them showed up to like the delivery room like. She's like lifers with those girls. Because like restaurant workers, you really make a family, but then add a level of dance on it. You're connected. Yeah. Through rhythm. Through rhythm. And I think it's a really fun place. Have you ever sat in Willie's Corner? No, but I've been there once and we sat at the bar. Every Texas Roadhouse has a table called Willie's Corner. And it is an entire resin table of Willie Nelson memorabilia. And the entire wall is like our walls behind us on the podcast, but even more Willie Nelson. Why have I never seen that? Why didn't we request that? Because we don't go there a lot because it is a restaurant that does kind of feature more of a meat-based diet. But um, we've gotten you what you needed. We got you some shrimp there for you. Yeah, like a cheese quesadilla or or a cheese critter. They don't have either of those on the menu, but a cheese critter could be kind of fun. I just wouldn't be involved. The fried pickles are great. Yeah, I didn't get them. You get some sides. I'm so down with the sides. And that's the thing about me is I'm an easy vegetarian. I don't need like a meat substitute. I like one. I won't turn one away unless it's tofurkey. Fuck that. But I like I can survive by sides. Mm, you are, and yeah, you don't mention that's my motto. Their pulled pork is really good too. Their barbecue sauce is so good. Their sweet tea is so good there. Or a Dr. Pepper. Oh my god, everything is so good. The closest one to us is over an hour away. I was gonna recommend we go there, but that's far too far. Two hours round trip for Roadhouse. I'm not doing it, but I want it, but I need it. But you need it, but you crave that mineral. I crave that mineral. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is the part of the show where we share what songs have been stuck in our head all week. As always, the playlists are linked in the episode description. Free on Spotify and YouTube. Jonathan, do you have a fun song for us this week? I do have a fun song that I don't know how it came out of the depths. You were with me when it just came out of my mouth this morning. Oh, yeah. What was it? Stuck Like Glue by Sugar Land. Can we sing a little? Oh, 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 oh. Stuck <laughs> Like Glue. Oh, 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 oh. And that's stuck how she like sings. Glue. Won't you do it and do it one time? You know the song. Yeah. We all know this song. Let's sing the chorus because that's not okay. really helpful. They go oh, making my heart beat again. Heart beat again. Heart beat again. And then, yeah, clearly we don't oh, know. Oh, oh. 
She really is gulping. Yeah, she's gulping. What's her name? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about them, okay? Because I found some really fun stuff out about them. Because I'm like, what else have they done? I don't really know them for anything else. Do you? Do they have other songs? Like that? They do have other songs, and I'm not in that side of the country scene. Sugarland's a duo. Christian Bush, male. Jennifer Nettles, female. So Jennifer Nettles is who we're talking about. Jennifer Nettles has like a career beyond this. So she's actually like an actress too, isn't she? And I'll get back to that. Okay. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So they, one thing I think is really great about them, they have always been a Beyonce fan. Not only yes. that, yes. but they supported her in the country community. And in their 2007 AMA performance covering Irreplaceable, they brought out Beyonce to sing with them. I remember this. And that was in 2007. So they have been supporters and I love that for them. Christian's brother, Brandon Bush, was the keyboardist for Train. Oh, so really talented family. Yeah. So when we... Oh, wait until you hear about just how talented the rest of his family is. Um, he now plays uh, keyboard on tour with Sugarland. That was a hard sentence for me to get out. Is there any relation to the Bush Bean Dynasty? He is related to the Bush Bean Dynasty. No way! Yes, I was going to save that for the last, but since you want to keep jumping ahead, I'll just tell you. I'm His, sorry. It's okay. You were excited about it. His great-grandfather was the founder of Bush's Beans and the Secret Family Recipe. Does he know the dog? It gets juicier. <laughs> he did an interview with Oprah. Oprah was interviewing him, not the other way around. And she was like, how do you, like, you're part of the bean, the Bush Bean Dynasty. What do you think about that? And he said, I can't stand them. <gasps> Not sure if he was talking about the beans or the family, but that's where it was left at. Definitely the family, because everybody loves those beans. I yeah. crave that mineral as well. <laughs> um, so when making, this is a different fun fact, when making the music video for their song, Want To, I don't know how it goes, but in my head it's like, you won't to, you won't to. They have, a, I, I think we know other songs. We'll have to listen I don't, after. I checked. I don't. Oh, I do really? Not. Okay. Yeah. So Jennifer Nettles' love interest was a model in this music video. He was a model named Justin Miller. She fell for him on set when they were filming. Two got married, 2011, still together. They have kids. <laughs> so cute. She's hot. He's hot. It's great. Uh, Jennifer's also, this is the part that I feel like maybe I'm last to this last of this train she's the one who sings with bon jovi and who says you can't go home who yes says did you, you know can't that? go back there's only one place and, and that's a matter of fact. did you know that I yeah no i did i think if you like gave it to me on who wants to be a millionaire i wouldn't even needed to call a friend i would have been fine yeah you would i don't said, need a 50 50 you know you're all set yourself some dog millionaire so also our last fun <laughs> fact jennifer was in the show Righteous Gemstones with John Goodman, Danny McBride, and Adam Devine. Oh, I thought she was an actor before that. I think she was, but I just, that was what popped up. I think she just has one of those names where I, I recognize it beyond Sugarland. Mm. So I think there's probably more that I recognize her from. It's a name that I remember, Jennifer Nettles. Okay, so what is your camp song? My song this week is also country. Okay. Um, and I saw it on a TikTok, and I was so excited because I completely forgot about it. And it's from November 2000. The song is Who I Am by Jessica Andrews. I never heard of it. Campers, isn't that so crazy that Jonathan doesn't know this song? Because I feel like this is such a Jonathan song. Yeah, I'm like a, like, a B-side one-hit wonder from, from the, the 2000s. 2000s. Like up my alley. This is literally your religion. So the fact that you didn't know this song is crazy. And I maybe you're not grasping it by the name because I didn't remember the name either. But I'm going to sing a little bit of it. And it, Campers, if any of you are out there that know this song, that'll warm my heart because it is a part of my childhood. I am Rosemary's granddaughter, the spitting image of my father. And when the day is done, my mom is still my biggest fan. What a lyrical genius. She was 17 and she didn't write it. Her grand newsflash, her grandmother's name is not Rosemary. Oh, then who's writing these lies? Her producer found her when she was like 10 years old at some sort of like um, talent show. They started working on a record label. So by 17, this was like her big hit. Um, and yeah, I just remember this playing in the car, playing. This was a song that you'd be in like a CVS. Oh, yeah. Or like a, a Radio Disney. Yeah. It was just very much like it's corporate America. Kohl's. This is a Kohl's playlist. Oh, this is Kohl's cat. And I just like didn't know much about her. I didn't even know her name. And this was kind of like her really big song. So I did a little bit of a deep dive on her because I was just like, what happened? Why was this her moment? And why wasn't there more of it? I'm sorry, what was her name? Um, Jessica Andrews. Okay. 17 when this started. J.A. She should have been a Taylor Swift. Yeah. It, she kind of was teed up to be one. Yeah. I mean, if she didn't write the song, I don't agree, but go, sure. 
Yeah, well, did Taylor write her own music from the very beginning? Yes. Yeah. She's well, she did little... covers, obviously. Yeah. She fine. couldn't hold a pencil. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure Taylor Swift knows this song. Mm, I bet she does. So this song reached number one on the Billboard um, Hot Country list. Hot. And it was number 28 on the normal Billboard. Okay. So it did well. It like charted really well. And she had a couple follow-ups. They just didn't catch fire because initially, well, the real reason why I, I believe her career didn't continue was truly this shift in music in the year 2000 pop was taking a real turn because of britney spears and there was a lot of country artists who were doing crossover well leanne rhymes we talked about coyote ugly leanne rhymes Mm -hmm. faith hill yeah shania twain shania twain had i had the cd for up and it came with two in the cassette. What a treat. I didn't know that when I purchased it. Well, I didn't purchase it. My mom purchased it at Borders. And when I opened it up, they had a green and a red one. And the the red one was pop and the green one was country. And it's the same songs, different Shania Twang. That's literally the exact reason why there was such a shift for country yeah. to go a little bit more mainstream. And either it was her. I don't think it was her. I think the people that were on her team were not facilitating that in the appropriate way. And there was just so much competition that her singles kind of got buried in the amount of like just insane talent that she was going up against. And um, it doesn't take away from her. Obviously, I just think that's the reason why we don't see more of her. Do you know who she was signed to? Um, It was DreamWork Nashville. Oh. Which essentially Toby Keith was a big part of that label. DreamWorks. Yeah, I know. And I believe it's affiliated the way it's spelled out. Shrek's ass. Yeah. If you look at it, you'd be like, I think that is the, the DreamWorks. And it eventually was bought out by UMJ, like everything oh, else was. Course. Um, but yeah, the song was featured on an episode of Lizzie McGuire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the part you where told me that. What? Kate and Lizzie would do that group project. And at the end yeah. of it, they looked at each other. The song played. I don't necessarily recall that. I, I know episodes you're talking about. Which is crazy that this song, like, this, okay. That would have been a song, because the same one yes. that Us Against the World by Play, there is no one else that I can say this to, is, I found that from Lizzie McGuire, the one where Miranda had the um the eating disorder episode. That was That heavy. was hard. That, that was, was hard. heavy. But that song, I was like. But needed. Yeah, I was like, sorry, I just, I need, if I had Shazam back then, it would have been game over. I just, I don't. No song from that time frame has ever flown under your radar. And this is one that, and I listened to it with you last night. And it didn't ring a bell? It didn't ring a bell. That's shocking. But it did shake a hip. And it shook these hips because I approve of this song and I love it. And I feel it's kind of fun that you knew this song and I didn't. Isn't that kind of fun? Yeah, for me. Yeah. And it's fun. Well, it's fun for me too. So like we're having a good time. And now that you introduced me to it. I'm going to be listening. Well, a song that shakes a hip is really the definition of a song on the hip songs. Yeah. So, 100%. yeah. Um, I think that's all I have for her. Um, and I hope some of you campers remember it because I feel like a little crazy, crazy. But you know who put it? So it's kind of going on TikTok right now, a little bit of a moment. You know who just used it in one of her videos to recap like her daughter's like birthday or whatever? Oh, I know. Bunny Jelly Roll's daughter. Jenny Roll's wife. Je- yeah. Jelly Roll's wife. Jenny Roll. <laughs> Jenny Roll. Um, no, but Jenny I feel Nettles. like she has such like a pull in like that community. And I wonder yeah. if, I wonder if there's going to be a little bit of resurgence because how exciting is it for Jessica Andrews, who I cannot find on Instagram to have this like moment right now. Find Jessica Andrews. No. Campers. Start the hashtag. Yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe she doesn't want to be found, but if we find her and we find that out, then we'll just like, you know, we'll let her go, but we'll let her be. But if she's open to being found campers, let's find Jessica. I searched on Instagram and there was one girl with a blue check, Jessica Andrews. And I was like, this is not her. Mm. Um, So I don't know where she is, but if she's out there, there and she's a camper um we'd love for you to sing at our summer sesh yeah oh my god our annual summer sesh it's gonna be crazy this year i'll shake my hip for everybody who's our headliner this year i forgot um it was supposed to be demi lovato but it's gonna be dita von teese instead yeah we gotta oh god we gotta order that giant glass and that giant hoop we're gonna have to hang it from the old birch well the good thing is i already ordered the giant dishwasher that we can put it in but that's just taking up too much space in the garage can you imagine that's really funny you're clever babe thank you i think that's all we have for today's episode yeah thank you guys so much for listening for tuning in i love it when you tune in to this public broadcast (laughs) (laughs) yeah so five stars where you can and uh if you want to be on our trail mix episodes on mondays you can write into camp counselors pod at g com or go to campcounselorspodcast.com send us your little story there we'll leave you anonymous we promise and yeah i think that's it yeah and with that being said lights, lights out campers, out campers.